So I've spent all of spring and summer being really obsessed with my wardrobe. There wasn't really any moment that I felt bored or uninspired by my clothes. I think it's taken me quite a while since having my son to find my groove again with my clothes. So there have been a few thoughtful additions to my wardrobe, but I think it's probably mainly been the way that I have styled my outfits and the pre-planning that I put into my wardrobe that has really helped me continue to feel excited and not bored of my clothes. So what I want for you to get from this video is that same excited feeling from your wardrobe as well. So today I'm gonna to share exactly what I did that I think is really helping me to stay interested and in love with my wardrobe. So let's start off with a few little things that you can do and then we'll move on to the really big thing that I think has had the biggest impact on my style. So I received a comment from Amanda on one of my recent decluttering videos. Amanda, if you are there, hi, hello, thank you for leaving this comment. And Amanda said in this comment, I have found that what works for me is to store away items that I like but I'm not choosing and then I pull them out when the appropriate season rocks around again. I often put them into rotation again and it feels like having new clothes. So what Amanda is talking about here is storing away items instead of decluttering them. What she gets from that is the feeling of having new clothes a year later when that season comes back around and I just love that thought and that is exactly what got me thinking about how we so easily do get bored of our clothes and our wardrobes and what are certain things that we can do to help us with that boredom so that is the first little quick tip is to try storing away the items for a year and pull them out next season and see if you're like way more interested in them that season but another thing I spoke about in that video was also challenging myself to wear items that I hadn't worn in a while in three different ways and I challenged myself to wear a top that I hadn't worn in years and that really helped to reignite that flame with that top in fact I have actually worn that top twice now since filming that video so it really did do the trick in bringing that top back to life for me so if you are getting bored of some of your items maybe try to challenge yourself to outfit them in different ways and see if you can actually wear them out of the house and it might just reignite your love for them so before I get to my number one big thing that has really helped make a big impact on my style boredom, I want to give you just a few more quick fire tips. The first quick fire tip is to swap outfits with friends. So you can organize a clothes swap if you and your friends are the same sizes, and then you can exchange items and introduce new items into your wardrobe. The next tip is to create your own lookbook. So create a digital lookbook of your outfits that you can create with what you already own that you can reference when you're feeling uninspired. I know some of you guys have suggested this one to me in the past, and it is just such a good idea. I actually use my own Pinterest page for this. I always go back on my old outfits because sometimes we just forget what we have, you know? So that next time you put a really great outfit together, take a snap of it and put it in your digital lookbook so that you can refer back to it on the days where you are really struggling to put an outfit together. It's one of those things that like your future self will thank you for it, you know? The next quick fire tip is to take fashion risks. I spoke about risk taking a little bit in my personal style evolution video, which I will link above. So don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and try different trends or different styles. The one way that I like to try trends a bit more mindfully is by shopping them secondhand as well. And speaking of secondhand shopping, that is the next quick fire tip. You can find really unique pieces in vintage stores and that can definitely help to keep some sort of excitement in your style. So the last quick fire tip is to invest in just one really versatile piece. So with this tip, you wanna think of one piece that is really going to take you really far in your wardrobe. Say for instance, you wanna bring in a pair of trousers. You wanna make sure that those trousers are so versatile that they basically go with every single top that you own and every single jacket that you own, if possible, you know, within reason. So you wanna think really hard about this one item and you wanna see if this one item can maybe give you maybe 10 to 20 new outfits in your wardrobe. That will 100% help keep things exciting in your wardrobe. This is a big challenge and it really depends where you are on your style journey, whether you can accomplish this or not. And we'll talk about this a bit later on in the video as well. But as an example from my wardrobe, over the summer, I brought in a pair of long wide leg trousers and <laughs> these were my one thing that just blew away my summer wardrobe. I could wear them with everything. And I actually didn't even have to buy them myself. I just asked Alex for them for Christmas. They'd been on my wish list for a very long time. So I had planned out and I knew that they were really gonna work and they were great they were that one piece
As you guys know from my recent style evolution video, I've done a lot of personal style work recently and I've spent the majority of the past year curating my wardrobe. An uncurated wardrobe can feel incomplete or lacking cohesion, leaving you feeling unsatisfied and bored of your outfits. A curated wardrobe is really versatile, making it really easy to mix and match your items to create new outfits often. A curated wardrobe also helps you slow down and actually respect the clothes that you have. It makes you want to wear your clothes over and over again. A curated wardrobe helps get you off that hamster wheel of continuously trying to buy your style and making lots of mistakes. If you have a curated wardrobe next time you buy something you know with almost 100% certainty that that is the next best item to add to your collection. I also think a curated wardrobe is also such a nice project to just always be slowly working on and that in itself can help relieve any boredom or animosity that you might feel towards your wardrobe. In last week's video I spoke briefly about having a curated wardrobe but today I want to actually leave you with some steps to take away. Make sure you're confident to start curating your own style as well. Step one, before you do anything else, self-reflection is the most important step to curating your wardrobe. Taking the time to actually learn about your style preferences, your proportions, what you feel most confident in will really help you curate your wardrobe in a successful way. So I've put together a few prompts for you, which I'll pop up on the screen now. These are questions for you to answer for yourself. So take the time now to either pause this video and answer these questions, or you could screenshot this and do it after the video. So I'll give you an example for an answer that I would give to one of these questions. So the question, what silhouette or shape of clothing do you generally feel most confident wearing? My answer to this is because I have narrow hips compared to my shoulders, I often feel really confident with a silhouette that enhances my hips and therefore gives me more of an hourglass figure. So that's just one example of something that comes to mind for me personally when I read that question. So now it's your turn to go through these questions and answer them for yourself and then we'll move on to the next steps. So after you've done your self-reflection, the next step is to define your ideal personal style. So choosing three descriptive words to describe your style is a really common technique that a lot of people use to help them develop their style. I believe it was first coined by Alison Bornstein, who is a New York based stylist. These three words aren't set in stone. They can adapt and grow as you change, but you wanna be actively thinking about them as your style grows and choosing whether they still match your lifestyle and your style preferences. And then if need be, you can change them. But most importantly, Importantly, your style is not defined strictly by these three style words. They are just there to help give you a guideline. So I've put together a list of some descriptive words that you may use to describe your style, but there are obviously way more than this as well. Use these as inspiration and pause the video now to see if you can come up with three words that describe your ideal style. And of course, these can be changed at any point, so don't worry too much. Just try to get something down on paper. So the next two steps are to find inspirational images and to think about your color palette. I'm not actually gonna go into detail about these steps in this video because we will be here for a bit too long. But in my last video, I spoke about the importance of a color palette and how that can really help you with your style. So I will link that above. And I have a very helpful blog post which talks more about developing your color palette, which I will link below. I also have a lot more content about color coming out soon. So keep an eye out for that. So now you understand your style preferences a little more. You have defined your lifestyle as well. You have found inspiration and thought about your color palette. And now it's time to do something that I like to call defining your personal style character. This is basically writing two to three sentences defining your ideal style. And you're gonna write this by using your three style words, using your color palette, using your lifestyle assessment, and using all of the reflection questions that we answered previously as well. So to show you how this may look, I'll give you the description of my own personal style character. She is classic, casual, and comfortable with a minimalistic and undone aesthetic. Neutral tones dominate with additional shades of blue and yellow. Her style is easygoing yet put together to get through those busy days with a toddler. So the next three steps include decluttering, creating your wardrobe wish list, and of course, mindfully shopping for those missing pieces. When I compare my wardrobe a couple of years ago to now, I've actually reduced the amount of things that I own by at least 50%. Yet now I feel like I have so much more to wear, and this was all possible from wardrobe curation. But wardrobe curation can take a little bit of time as you patiently do the work. So what do you do in the meantime to keep things exciting without actually decluttering anything or buying anything new? Well, if you watch this video on the screen now, 
I share four techniques I use to get inspired to create outfits from things that I already own. One of the outfits that I created was actually inspired by this interior design image. So to see how I turn this image into an outfit, click on that video there and I will see you over there. Ta-da! Bye.